Welcome to our third segment of Ask the AD. I'm Frank Alaco, sitting here with our athletic director, Scott Sidwell. We're sitting in our new men's basketball locker room. Beautiful state-of-the-art room, and I'd like to ask Scott, uh, what's the history behind the creation of this locker room? Well, first of all, it was a tremendous project, Frank. You know, it got done here this past spring and summer and into the fall, and we just opened them up last week. And as you can see, looking around and, and some of the uh, images that we put out and things that we've done, it's a fantastic space. And, and it really came together a combination of some donors who were looking to, to help us, you know, get to the next level and really wanted a space that was good for both our men's and women's basketball. And, and so they all stepped up and then we've met with the coaches and got the architects on board and, and here we are in our space. So we're really thrilled at the space. It's a fantastic room and we think it's going to pay big dividends for us down the road. Scott, one of our fans wrote in with basketball in full swing with the balls bouncing upstairs. Are there any surprises? I don't think there's any surprises. I think the thing that you know I'm looking most forward to is just the, the way our teams gel and how they come together. You know, on the men's side, we have four or five returning starters, and then Charles Menlin comes back from being out a year injured and, and a, a, a good young group. So I think that, you know, a senior-laden team on the men's side is going to be fun to watch. And look, coming off of a 22-win season in the CBI Finals, uh, we look for, for big things from that group to, to continue the progress that they've made. Now, on the women's side, a, a brand-new team, in essence. Uh, we've got some returners there in Shannon Powell and, and Moa Lundquist. And, but uh, if you look at the group that came in, nine international players playing a very, you know, tough brand of basketball and style that, that, that uh, Molly likes. So we're excited to see, uh, to see that group play, too. Scott, the whole city is invigorated and excited about the Golden State Warriors, world champion Warriors coming into the city. One of our fans asked about that relationship and saying, can you provide us with an update on the plan to play at the Chase Center? Yeah, so, so we have been working uh, for quite some time now, uh, close to a year and a half, two years uh, with the Warriors uh, on a number of different things, one of them being in particular playing uh, the first college basketball game uh, in the Warriors' new Chase Center here November 9th, 2019. Uh, we're finalizing the opponents uh, now uh, for both men's and women's basketball, and uh, we're excited about that. We think it's, it's great. It's a symbolic opportunity for the University of San Francisco to welcome the Warriors back to San Francisco. They will have played preseason games and those types of things. But the first college basketball game, I think, is a very significant opportunity for us to brand who we are as the only Division One college basketball team in the city, certainly our history with the championships, and, and really branding ourselves uh, with the Warriors uh, as basketball in the city, and we think that that's important. Now, on the, uh, beyond that, you know, we're working on a lot of community-based projects. We're looking at some academic programming uh, with the Warriors and, and doing a lot of great things. Just tomorrow night, we're gonna have you know, Steve Kerr come out for the Silk Speaker Series. And so when you look at those kind of opportunities to work with a uh, brand like the Warriors, it's significant for us. Sounds like a very vibrant partnership. Scott, with the uh, use of the Chase Center, will that allow us to increase the quality of our schedule? That's the plan. I mean, we, as we looked out at the model that we're trying to build for our men's and women's basketball programs, it looks very much like some out there in the country, in particular, the last two out of three national champions in Villanova. Um, you know, they play six games down at the, the Comcast Center there in, in uh, Philadelphia, and they use that as an opportunity to you know, recruit uh, players to that. They're going to play in a pro arena. Um, you can play more high profile games uh, down there versus playing them on our campus. And so for us, it's, it's about, you know, giving ourselves the best opportunity to engage and, and play at a high level. That's great. Uh, thanks again to all our fans for reaching out uh, for questions for our athletic director. Scott, since you've been here, I know the major focus you've had is on improving the facilities and trying to provide the best for our students. In the past seven years, I think there's been a symphony of hammers hammering and shovels shoveling with all the different projects that you've done. Can you give us an update on what's going on in the Sobrato Center? Yeah, and, and really, Frank, I want to take a, take a moment here just to thank all of those wonderful people who have uh, helped us along the way to get this. You know, nothing happens without great donor support. Uh, it's an opportunity for our fans to engage and opportunity for them to see the progress, you know, uh, in, in person. And, uh, and so, you know, we start with Mr. Uh, Sobrato and his great uh, landmark gift to help us with the Sobrato Center. Certainly Mr. Malloy and the Malloy Pavilion practice facility, right on down to the likes of Roger Salquist and the Salquist Performance Center. We've got the, the Fisher office suites, um, on and on and on. We've had a number of people who have helped us, including some anonymous donors that helped us with this with this project down here. So the Sobrato Center in, in earnest is, is underway. We've a lot of behind the scenes. You you I, you laugh. Uh, you and I laugh all the time about you know the sounds of progress, right? So we were sitting in a meeting the other day and. 
all of a sudden the big drills going off and we can't hear anything and, and we just smile because we knew that things were getting done. So a lot of the back end, the wiring, you know, we've already had two phases of the Soprato Center start with some seismic reinforcements two years ago. This past year we added a mechanical room. Now we're starting to put stuff in the mechanical room. But the big project looks to start here uh, right at the end of the year, first of the year, and then from there, you know, a year to 18 months out will be when we start to see the big, big changes happening in the gym. At the same time, we're, you know, with the Malloy uh, Pavilion Praxis Facility, we're going to be, um, you know, submitting that to the city for, for to be approved and so we can keep, keep our progress going. So I think it's a very, very dynamic time here over the next, you know, 24 to 30 months. You're going to see a lot of the big things happening. Uh, this is symbolic of all of the, not that it's little, but same things that the fans wouldn't see on a day in, day out basis. The things that are gonna be forward facing to the university are getting ready to start here pretty soon. Yesterday was another spectacular day on the hilltop. Beautiful weather, nice crowd out to watch our women's soccer team play. Another gritty performance by them in a great three to two win over Portland. Uh, any updates that you could provide on the fall? What is your sense of how the fall season has gone? Yeah, you know, we've, we've had our ups and our downs. Um, we, we feel, you know, really confident about, you know, the progress that we're making. Uh, women's soccer has been a great example of that. A very, very young team competing now for a conference championship late in the season with three games to go. Uh, that's great. Ten wins. Uh, looking at a, you know, a chance to, to get in that top three and, and potentially go to the NCAA uh, co College Cup playoff. So that's exciting for them. Men's soccer has had some injuries. Disappointing coming off of off of a WCC season, but the, you know a great recruiting class last year, and we'll continue that and we'll get that get that ship righted and, and get it going. Pat McCurry and his team have done a tremendous job with our with our uh, cross country and track programs. I think both those programs are are stable and solid, and will continue the great you know work that they've done. And volleyball under Frank Lavrisha continues to get better and better, and you're seeing that with, you know, we we're winning some sets. We're you know we've won eight games. Last year we won four, you know, and so just starting to see the progress. It's all in front of us, you know, and, and that's exciting for us to to, to say as the facilities projects are coming, as we're looking forward to a great basketball season, as we've you know, got the, the Benedetti Diamond done and now baseball is recruiting to that. You know, we keep talking about the future, well, really the future is now, you know, and it's really starting to come and, and we're looking for people to continue to support us in those efforts. You know, our students have been great this fall supporting athletic events as well as university events. What plans do we have this year to get more students involved in coming out to games? Yeah, I think the first thing is just engagement, right? So we've, we've developed a, a group, or we've got a focus group, you know, a meeting tomorrow to continue that progress, working with our student life, working with, you know, groups in our spirit squad, our band. We can look for a new cheerleading group coming on board. We're excited about that. The Fog Mob, the group of students that come out and, and cheer and get the crowd hyped up is, is something that we're, you know, excited about, you know, engaging that. Inside of the arena uh, for basketball, what you can see is we've, we're adding some, a couple of student stations. You know, we've got to have an area just off the club where they have their own space and, and for those uh, that, you know, come to the game, they can congregate there. We've kind of moved the student section over above our bench uh, and then down down below, we're going to, you know, reinstate that we have students that are able to sit downstairs. And, and so it's all about engagement. It's all about getting excited. And I think the schedule is going to play out to that for the men's basketball as well as women's basketball. We'll have some opportunities there too. So it's exciting to get the students involved. Scott, can you share any special promotions? Yeah, you know what? I mean, hey, look, as, as we start the season, it's always fun to look forward to the rally towels and the T-shirts and foam finger giveaways. We're doing some neat, you know, neat stuff with concessions uh, against uh, Arizona State Sun Devils on Friday, November 16th. We're, you know, going to have a fork fork out uh, on that night. And, and so, um, you know, we're going to be doing some specialty concessions and different things. So that's those are all fun things for fans to get involved in, certainly students to get involved in. And really the big message is, look, come out. Come out and experience it. Come out and be a part of it. And uh, it's going to be an exciting season. Well, I want to thanks again to our fans for reaching out uh, for this segment of Ask the AD. Please continue to reach out, submit to Don's Athletics via Twitter and Facebook, and use the hashtag Ask the AD. And finally, I want to thank Scott for his time, his endless energy. Now I think we should use this great locker room. Let's get changed, go out and see if we can play Ferrari and Renfro in a game of two-on-two. -two. The only chance we have there is with the video game behind us, I can tell you that. So listen, again, I want to thank everybody for, for these great segments. It's an opportunity for, for myself and, and our department to talk directly to you. Please continue to engage, continue to ask the questions. You can ask us any question and we're going to answer it for you. And, and we're excited about that. And, and, uh, and the support that you give us is tremendous. And, and thanks again and go Dons.